Okay. All right, so we need to type negative one half. So if it's a negative, we're going to use this minus down here. This is the negative button. This is the minus button. This is the negative button. So we're typing a negative one half. So I'm going to type that first. Now, whenever I'm typing a fraction in an equation like this, I don't like to use a fraction button because it makes it so whatever I'm graphing, it's going to spit out fractions instead of spitting out decimals. And fractions are harder to graph than decimals are. I would rather graph 4.5. I would rather my calculator not tell me to graph 9 halves. 4.5 is easy to graph, 9 halves requires me to think a lot harder. Does that make sense? So if you program a fraction into your calculator, your calculator says, ooh, this person likes fractions, I will give you all the fractions. If you don't program it into your calculator as a fraction, then your calculator goes, I see you decimal person, I shall give you decimals. It's like your calculator's trying to anticipate what kind of person you are. So what I would do if I was you is instead of typing this as a one-half fraction, I would just type one divided by two. You can type one divided by two. Your calculator says fractions, division, those are the same thing. And your calculator's going to say one divided by two. Yep, that's 0.5. I'm going to go with decimals for this person. Okay, so I would type one divided by two. It's just going to be easier for you with graphing. Okay? All right, so we've got negative one-half. Now, we have to get that absolute value up on the screen. How do we do that? We need the absolute value. How do we do that? Hmm? Another what? No. I'm teaching right now. What do, what do I need to do? hit the math button, and then what do we do? Go over to number, and we use the first one. I got a lot of people not really paying attention, so if you are confused on this, I'm not gonna have a lot of sympathy. I'm just letting you know now. Later, if you're like, Ms. Rice, I don't get it, I'm gonna be like, uh, oh, that's, go watch a video. All right. Um, so we have x plus 8 inside here, so I'm just going to find the x button. It's right underneath the mode button, x, x plus 8. And then I need to get out of that and type minus 3. Again, if we were to read this out loud, we would say minus 3. And so whenever you read it out loud like that, you want to use um, this minus over here. So minus 3. Oops, I had to get out of that first. So... Make sure the minus 3 is outside, like this, minus 3, oops, minus 3, like that. And then once you have it typed in, you can go ahead and hit the graph button. And this one, because it had the negative uh, 1 half in front, it's upside down because it had the negative in front. And then because it had the 1 half, it made the graph really wide. You guys can see this graph is pretty wide. The other graphs aren't usually this wide. And that's because of the 1 half in front. Okay, how do we find the points? Anybody know? How do we find the points? We look for the vertex first. What's the vertex? Negative 8, negative 3, okay. And then from there, we grab our calculators and we type something to get the points. Anyone remember what we type? Second. second graph. So the blue button, second, and then the graph button over here, second graph. And we are looking for that vertex. We're looking for negative 8, negative 3. So these are all the positive coordinates. And we want a negative 8. So I'm going to scroll up to look where all the negatives are. So there's negative 8, negative 3. I'm going to keep going. 
Uh, now, if you don't want to graph decimals, you don't have to. So I'm going to graph negative 8, negative 3, and then I'm going to skip the decimal. I don't want to graph that one. Then I'm going to graph negative 10, negative 4. I'm going to skip the decimal, and then I'm going to graph... Oh, I can't really go any further. I guess I'm going to have to graph some decimals. So I'll graph negative 8, negative 3, and then negative 9, negative 3.5, and then negative 10, oops, negative 10, negative 4. Okay. And then the other way, negative 7, negative 3.5, negative 6, negative 4. And I'm going to do just a couple more whole numbers. So negative 4, negative 5. like that okay all right so let's do this again and we're gonna kind of use the shortcut this time just like last time and then if you guys need me to show you the shortcut Another time we can. I can keep thinking of, exam of examples until you understand the shortcut. Because when we practice this, we're going to use the shortcuts. We are not going to draw graphs. We're just going to use the shortcut. Okay? So what is the number that splits this in half from left to right? Yeah. What is the number that splits it in half from left to right? the vertex, but which part of the vertex? Negative 8. So you're always going to use the x coordinate of the vertex because x has to do with left and right. So if you want to split it from left to right, you're going to use the x coordinate. So negative 8 splits it in half. And so when I start writing my piecewise function, I'm going to say one piece is to the left of negative 8 and one piece is to the right of negative 8. Okay? And then I'm going to say the negative version of the equation is always on the left side. And you're going to see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to say the negative version of the equation. And then if you look back, do you guys see how the equation is negative? So if I say the negative version, then I'm going to say the negative version of a negative. So I've got a negative negative. Now, if you guys look at the left side of the graph, is that slope negative or positive? Wait, wait, look at the slope. This is a positive slope. So over here, when I said the left side of the equation is the negative version of the equation, I put a minus minus, and what happens with a minus minus? It makes a plus. So what just happened is I just made my slope positive. And if you look at the left side of the graph, you have a positive slope. Everyone see that? OK. Now, the next equation, you just take the regular equation and you write it down. So the regular equation had a negative in front of it, so I'm just going to leave it regular. Negative 1 half, x plus 8, minus 3. Just leave it regular. And now, all I have to do is make this look nice. So I'm going to say 1 half multiplied by x is what? 1 half x. Uh, 1 half multiplied by 8. What's 1 half of 8? 4. And then we have a minus 3. Okay, so we've got 1 half x and then a positive 4 and a negative 3. Positive 4 and negative 3 is 1, okay? 
if we look at the left side. Okay, so let's look back at our graph. If we follow this pattern, the pattern goes up one over two. So if we follow the pattern, I'm just following my pattern here, making a straight line. Does this pattern have a y-intercept of one and a slope of up one, right two? Y-intercept of one, slope of up one, right two. Okay, so that fits. The left side does exactly what we expected it to. Okay, let's look at the other side. We have a negative one-half multiplied by x. What does that give us? Negative one-half multiplied by x. Okay, negative one-half x. Uh, negative one-half multiplied by eight. Negative four. Uh, and then a minus three. Okay, so we have a negative one-half x, and then if we have minus four and minus three, what does that give us? Minus seven, okay. Uh, if x is greater than negative eight, so if we're looking at the right side, so if we look at this pattern, does this fit? We have a y-intercept of negative seven and a slope of down one, right two, down one, right two. Does that fit the picture? Slope of negative seven, or uh, y-intercept of negative seven, down one, right two, down one, right two? Yeah, okay. And then if we look at the graph, negative eight is not missing, negative eight is actually there. And so one of these has to have an equal to, it doesn't matter which one, I'm just gonna put it on the top one, and then I'm done. Okay, do you guys want to see more problems with the shortcut? Would that be helpful? Or do you feel comfortable using that shortcut, saying we look at the left side, we look at the right side, we take the left side, we put a negative in front of it, we take the right side, we leave it normal. Another example, leave it there. Because the plan after this, you guys see the cards around the room? The plan after this is you're going to do an around the room activity, and that's what we're doing for the period. Which means that for you to go from one problem to the next, you have to get them right. You have to be able to do the problem, get it right, to be able to go to the next problem. Should we maybe do one more? Maybe? You can't just look at me with a blank face. I don't know what to do with that. Just one more? Okay. Um, da -da -da. I don't have room on here. Okay, I don't know. Well, go ahead and get out a sheet of paper because you're gonna need it for the activity anyway. So we can do this next one on the sheet of paper that we will do the activity on. Can we just do one of the ones around the room together? Well, if we do that together, then you guys will all be starting in the same place. And then you guys will just be moving around the room like a herd of elephants. Yeah, works better if you guys all start in different places. Sure we do this example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys can title this uh, paper that we're doing absolute value as piecewise, PW for piecewise. And we call it piecewise because it has multiple pieces. So the piecewise functions that we're doing today, they only have two pieces. They have a left side, they have a right side. 
but piecewise functions can have as many pieces as you want. Like if you were crazy, you could make a piecewise function that had 27 pieces. I would not do that, but you could if you wanted to. No thank you. All right, so don't say it out loud, but I want you guys to take a moment and I want you to figure out what the vertex is. So don't say it out loud, just take a moment and write it down. Figure out what the vertex is. Okay, anyone want to share what they think the vertex should be? Yeah. Perfect, negative three, negative five. So it's the opposite of the x value that's inside and then it's exactly the same as what's on the end, okay? The next thing I want you to do is I want you to start off with this part, right? I want you to write what I wrote. And I want you guys to figure out what number should go right in here. I want you guys to figure out what number should go right in here. So remember, we're always splitting the graph in left and right. That's a hint. Anyone want to share what number they decide to put? Yeah. Negative three. So since we're splitting the graph left and right, we always want to use an x value. So we're taking the x value. And you can kind of tell, too, because it says x. So use the x coordinate because it says x. So we're looking to the left of negative three, we're looking to the right of negative three. Okay, now for the next part, I want you to figure out how to write the negative version and the regular version. So up here, we write the negative version. Down here, we write the regular version. You don't have to simplify it. You don't have to simplify it, you just have to write it. So the negative version and then the regular version. So how do we write the negative version? Not simplified, but how do we just write the negative version of the equation? Any ideas? Yeah. Yep, negative, negative x plus 3 minus 5. Yep. So it already had a negative in the front, so if you do the negative version, you end up with another negative in the front. Okay, good. And then how do you write the regular version? Just one negative. You just copy it down. Negative x plus 3 minus 5. You just write it. Okay? All right, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to fix this. Minus minus makes a plus, okay. I want you to get rid of your parentheses. 
get rid of your parentheses, combine like terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out like what is our final answer supposed to look like. So it's going to be something x is less than negative 3, something x is greater than negative 3. Anyone want to share what they have for just the top one? Mm -hmm. X minus 2 is perfect. So we had an X, we had a positive 3, we had a negative 5. So when you combine your like terms, you have a positive 3 and a negative 5, which makes a negative 2, and then just an X. Okay. Uh, the other one requires a little bit more work, because you got the negative to distribute. Anyone have the second one? Yeah. Negative x minus 8. Perfect. So with this one, we distribute the negative. We get negative x minus 3 minus 5. And then the negative 3 and the negative 5 makes negative 8. Now, my answer is almost perfect, but I need one more little thing. I need an equal to. So if we were to draw the graph, the vertex wouldn't be skipped. So this shows I've got the left side, I've got the right side, but I gotta have the middle. I need that middle point. So one of these just needs an equal to, and it doesn't matter which one. So if you guys put the equal to on the bottom one instead of the top like I did, you are still right. It is right as long as you don't put an equal to on both of them, just one or the other, okay? You always have to do that on one or the other. If you don't do that, it's wrong, but just barely. Just barely wrong. It would be like you graphed it and you graphed it like this and you had just a little hole right there. Just a little missing piece. You graphed everything but one little point. So what we did is we said, nope, fill that point in. We want the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So if you took all your notes, leave your notes on your desk so that